What makes a supercar super? It's one of automotive life's deepest questions. Obviously, it has to be fast. It has to look spectacular. It has to be appealing yet intimidating. And it has to deliver performance at the expense of almost everything else. This is the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, the last mid-engined, naturally aspirated V12 supercar left on sale today. And I don't think there's another supercar that fits that description quite as well as the SVJ, because the SVJ, perhaps more than any other car, is completely and utterly single-minded in its pursuit of one thing, impressing five-year-olds and speed. Right, launch control, ESC off, Corsa, thrust mode, this is gonna hurt. Oh my God, oh that, <laughs> that is not to 62 in 2.8 seconds. I'm impressed, and I'm not even five. <laughs> this thing is savage. I feel like savage is a bit of an overused word, but going by the fact that my neck is broken and my insides have been completely rearranged. Yeah, I'd, I'd say savage is a pretty good word right now. Woo! The Aventador SVJ or Super Veloce Yota is the ultimate Lambo. It sits above the standard Aventador S and replaces the SV at the top of the range. It was designed for one purpose, to be the fastest production car around the Nürburgring. And to do that, they had to make some pretty dramatic changes to the standard car. First, there's the engine. This car uses the same six and a half litre naturally aspirated V12 that you find in the SV, but for this, it's been tickled ever so slightly. It's got titanium valves, a redesigned cylinder head and intake manifold. It's got a lighter, shorter exhaust and a lighter flywheel. So now it makes 770 horsepower at 8,500 RPM. Proper supercar power. And it makes a proper supercar noise. Listen to that V12. Oh, plug it into my veins. And this gearbox. It's outrageous, going from second to third. The entire car shakes. It feels like you're having an accident every time you shift up. It's violent. It's also light. At just over 1,500 kilograms, it's 200 kilos lighter than a Ferrari 812 Superfast. It's athletic, it's purpose-built. It's one of the most uncompromised, track-focused, extraordinary supercars the world has ever seen. But that's not always good news. You see, the problem with building the most track-focused, extraordinary supercar the world has ever seen is that it's really bad at doing ordinary things. Imagine a car that's been designed deliberately, I think, to be as annoying as possible. That is what the SVJ is, I promise you. You've got this enormous V12 behind you and no sound deadening material whatsoever, not even a carpet, so there's nothing to soak up the noise in this car. It's always super loud, all of the time. These seats are as uncomfortable as you like. There's no padding in them whatsoever, barely any adjustment. Actually, no, there's, there is no adjustment whatsoever. You have to contort your body into what shape the seat wants you to be in, and that's that. No negotiation whatsoever. And then what is this gearbox? Honestly, what is it? It uses this old school single clutch sequential manual that's robotized. In other words, a computer takes care of the gear changes most of the time. And it's pretty abysmal. Honestly, you put your foot down from a slow speed and then as it changes from first to second, it just lurches from one gear to another and pretty much all the time gets confused about what gear it's supposed to be in. It's baffling. Only Lamborghini could get away with having the gearbox this bad. Having said that, it's got a couple of good things going for it. The actual ride is not as bad as I thought it might be. Only if you're in Strada mode though, any other mode is a complete nightmare, too bouncy. And then there's a turning circle, which is actually really good. The car uses rear wheel steering, so it can actually negotiate tight turns, three point turns, roundabouts, and pretty much everything else that normal cars can tackle with no fuss whatsoever. 
but it's not the kind of car you'd want to use as a daily. There's no storage space, no door bins, no glove box. There's a tiny place you can put a mobile phone, but not much else to make a human feel welcome. If you see someone driving an SVJ through town desperately trying to look cool, don't believe it for a second. They're struggling. In any other car, these traits would be a deal breaker. Nobody wants something as unrefined, uncomfortable, and as difficult to drive as this. Nobody that is, except Lamborghini. When Stefano Domenicali challenged his designers and engineers to improve the Aventador, he told them he didn't just want a normal car. He wanted the ultimate supercar. He wanted them to draw on every inspiration possible. Spaceships, jet fighters. If it's fast and has aerodynamic superiority, he wanted it in the SVJ. And he definitely got it, didn't he? I mean, if you want a car that attracts attention, the SVJ is definitely the one. The standard Aventador looks mad enough, but this thing is a whole new level. The front end is super aggressive. And then there are loads of little details, like round here on the side, carbon fiber wing mirrors, carbon fiber side skirts, and then this massive air intake on the side, big enough to, I don't know, swallow a baby. Then round the back, you've got these super aggressive center-mounted exhausts, this enormous rear diffuser, ridiculous rear wing. And then my favorite bit is this engine cover, which definitely does look like something out of a spaceship. You've even got this little glass panel here that lets you have a cheeky little glance at your V12. It kind of looks like utter madness, but there is method behind it. This giant wing works in conjunction with two slots in the nose of the car that form Lamborghini's ALA system, Aerodynamica Lamborghini Ativa. With all the flaps and slots closed, the splitter and rear wing work as normal, providing downforce. 40% more than the SV. When you're going fast in a straight line, the front flaps open, reducing drag and sending air underneath the car to be managed by the rear diffuser. A pair of flaps inside this central pillar of the wing then open up and divert air inside the spoiler where it escapes through tiny holes, creating disruptive vortices that stall the wing either as a whole or on either side. People say Lambos are big and dumb, but this is actual supercar science. Lambos quite often get accused of being one-trick ponies, great in a straight line, but not so great around corners. But let me tell you, categorically, this SVJ is absolutely phenomenal in every respect. 6, 44, 9, 7. That's the magic number. That's the number you need to remember to tell people who doubt the SVJ's credentials. Because 6 minutes, 44.97 seconds, is the Nürburgring lap record held by the SVJ. There is no other production car as quick as this around the green hell. It's a minute quicker than the Pagani Zonda. An entire minute. Obviously out here, we can't get anywhere near to feeling the full force of this car's capabilities. You need a racetrack to even begin to scratch the surface of the SVJ's potential. But what I can tell you is that this is the fastest car I've ever cornered in, bar none. The amount of grip, mechanical grip in this car, is just staggering, it's otherworldly. You throw it into a bend and it just, it just sticks. I would love to tell you that I can feel the downforce being provided by that clever aero system, but truth be told, I can't. All the grip is being provided by Pirelli P0 courses, and there is a hell of a lot of it. If you are interested in your downforce levels, then there's a little display up on the dashboard that shows you exactly how much downforce you get in front and rear. If you're not on a racetrack, you're not gonna feel it. Out here, it's all about mechanical grip, and there is tons of it. The SVJ uses aluminium double wishbone suspension controlled by inboard pushrod spring and damper units. The spring rates are the same as the SV, but the SVJ's magnetic dampers are 50% stiffer and its anti-roll bars 15% stiffer than before, making it feel like a true race car. It's a big son of a gun, the SVJ, but it really doesn't feel it when you're on the move. And that's in large part because it uses rear wheel steering, so the rear wheels turn the opposite direction to the fronts to help the nose get tucked in and it works an absolute treat. All-wheel drive cars can tend to feel a bit nose heavy, a bit understeery, not a bit of it in the SVJ. You point it at an apex, <laughs> and the nose, ah, oh, it's so precise. It's a really, really good front end on this car. 
A car with this much power should feel intimidating, and it does in a straight line with the throttle pin. But through the corners, all-wheel drive traction gives you incredible confidence to get on the power almost as early as you like, and carbon ceramic brakes to get on the stoppers as late as you dare. Then, when you're up to speed, the gearbox comes alive, and in Corsa mode, the shifts are violent, aggressive, engaging. And then you've got all of this happening to the soundtrack of a naturally aspirated V12 revving to damn near 9,000 RPM. I say revving, it's not revving, it's screaming, bellowing. Oh. Lamborghini don't use a petrol particulate filter in this car. I don't know how to get away with it, but what it means is that the SVJ is probably the loudest factory car I've ever heard on the road. It is astonishingly loud. It sounds incredible. It's not just the speed that's impressive about the SVJ, it's how it achieves it. It goes about its business with this stubborn, single-minded, pig-headed approach to almost everything. The gearbox is dumb, the looks are ridiculous, the engine, an NA V12. It's a relic. It's an ergonomic nightmare, this car, that seemingly incorporates elements just to make the car faster or look better, even if it makes the driver more uncomfortable. And yet, I wouldn't have it any other way. There are other supercars, of course, with similar power or with fantastic designs and plenty that offer an epic driving experience. But I struggle to think of any that are as single-mindedly bonkers while being as devastatingly effective as this. And that is what a supercar should be. Ultimately, the SVJ, with all of its idiosyncrasies and annoyances, married to its incredible technology and outrageous speed, is for me the very definition of a supercar. This is what supercars should be.